Those that didn't know, like, he came with, he came with, this is why I'm hot. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. That's his biggest hit. The only biggest hit, bro. Like you a personal computer. Jesus, won't you pardon my back? Judas, as I maneuver through all the maneuver. Do any of you niggas know the time? Do ya? Frank Mueller, ruler, Ricky Minaj. Baby, give me Becky and Nikki. I'm a beast, not a dog. I belong in the jungle. I'm buzzing. You don't know who I be. Bumble. Sean Maurice Mims, a.k.a. Mims, born March 22, 1981. The story of the one-hit wonder can vary from being solely known for that one song and it continuing to allow them to profit off said hit record, to disappearing from the music scene after the heat of their hit record cools off and they aren't able to make more charting hit records to follow up. There's no real in-between especially in the ever-evolving genre of hip-hop where almost by the season a new artist comes out, blows up off his style, and what he or she brings new to the table. Today's feature Mims is the perfect example of how the journey goes for a one-hit wonder that for whatever reason couldn't match the success of a previous hit record and it sent them down a path of experiencing all the ills of the music business when the artist is seen as no longer popular in his space. Mims, of course, became popular in 2007 with the ultra simple, very catchy, and perfect for the ringtone era song, This Is Why I'm Hot. That's the same year that Soldier Boy came up with that Crank That song, bro. Um, but at least Soldier Boy, like, you know, like, you know, kept going, like, he kept making, like, hits, you know? He, he cranked that wasn't his only hit. Like, he had other hits, too. Like, Chris, you threw the phone, like, um, what else? Soldier Girl and, and Yah, Drag, Yah, and all those other songs, so, yeah. No matter where you went, you couldn't help but hearing that song for the entire 07 year. It garnered major success from them, who was on the clock with his label Capitol Records, coming in as their flagship hip-hop artist. Initially, things were going great. Mims was off to the start everyone involved had hoped for, with This Is Why I'm Hot shooting up the charts as a single, all the way to the number one record in the country, not just hip-hop and R&B. Artists can wait their entire career for that opportunity, but Mims did it on his first try, with the label in need of success in their hip-hop department. A huge part of the reason the record became a success was it being heavy on samples of old hip-hop hit records and even classics like Kanye West, Jesus Waltz, Nothing But A G Thing, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, Mob Deep's Shook Ones Part 2, Front to Back by Exhibit, and even Tell Me Where to Go by E-40. With that mixture, it's hard not to make at least the platform for an artist to make his own hit song, then adding the easy to follow, braggadocious but confident, ageless hope that anyone could sing along to, dumbing it all the way down to the simplest form of explaining why you're better than someone else was accidental genius. I'm hot cause I'm fly, you ain't cause you're not fly. Simple, straight to the point, and straight up the charts and sales of his ringtone, giving Mims the opportunity and platform like mentioned most artists never get, having an entire country feeling that for the moment, you created the hottest song on the market. From here, you either go up and have what it takes to sustain popularity, or you fall off, tumbling down the charts till the label sees no value in you and you become remembered for that one hit song forever. Mims was on his way with the opportunity he got, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth Music. Back, let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Mims is a rapper from Washington Heights, New York of Jamaican descent that grew up not knowing his father until he was nine years old. 
When the two met for the first time at his father's home, he became fixated on the DJ equipment his father had, and all he wanted to know from the visit was what was that and how can he get some of those. Sadly, his mom would pass away shortly after that, and one of her last gifts to her son were the turntables and some DJ equipment he always wanted. Ironically, he used those to help him escape the noise and confusion of the reality that he had lost his birth father, who died when Mims was 11 years old, and mother, who died not long after giving birth to what was supposed to have been Mims's sister. She passed away as well a week later from complications of being born premature. He took those turntables and focused all his time on music. After graduating high school, he began taking music seriously and stumbled on a beat CD with This Is Why I'm Hot, produced by DJ Blackout. Mims, as a joke, freestyled the hook and to the room's surprise, it was hot. The song immediately caught on and rose up the charts, making Mims the hottest artist in the country at its peak. Stunt number one, lack of album success. While This Is Why I'm Hot stormed its way to being on the charts for weeks, all his labels and Mims could think was how they were going to promote an artist no one knows much about outside his radio-friendly single. He didn't have the typical black neighborhood story, and as an artist, his raps weren't in need of doing the most dissecting. Again, Capitol needed a home run with Mims, and for the most part, they got one on his first single swing. But unlike baseball, one home run doesn't mean you're off to strutting around all the bases on your way home. Home, for musicians, is being able to grow a strong target fan base that follows and grows with your music big enough to allow your label continued belief in you to push you as an artist how you need to be pushed. You need at least a first swing, then your next is in the form of a follow-up single, then finally swinging on a successful album that can put you in a space you become a viable hip-hop artist. Missing on any of these swings can mean you never get on or become a one-hit wonder. Mims got on because his first ad bat was great going two times platinum and selling tons of ringtones. His second in the single Like This was another top 40 song, peaking at 32, not close to what his first single did, but went gold over time. What could have saved Mims at this point was a successful album. His debut release March of 2007 and sold 78,000 copies first week. Great numbers for the now era, but back then it was seen as a flop for Mims. Critics heavily feeling it had no soul to it or no more hit records with number one potential. The album did generate around $13 million to which Mims received $30,000 on his first check and proceeded to litigate the label, creating bad terms with the label, who he eventually parted ways with after his follow-up album, Guilt, flopped as well. He made a number one song and couldn't find the success in album sales, leading to a disgruntled label and artist that had enough of each other. Stunt number two, couldn't carry an album. of Rolling Stone magazine after reviewing Mims's first album. Of course, they aren't alone in feeling so. I think the consensus is that Mims was made to make hit singles and not full-length albums. Back then, you were heavily graded on how well your album was and did. So asking, well, why did he even put out an album if he knew it wasn't the one is a valid question. But first off, you have to understand, artists usually can't tell for themselves what they made isn't hot. A part of being a successful rapper is being confident and almost narcissistic about your creations, which can misguide you into not seeing the issue. For Mims, there were more than a few. First off, he may have been ahead of his time in ways, like selling 78,000 copies of your first album today means a success for an artist like Mims. But back then, it was a failure in the label's eyes and possibly Mims himself. Or him even attempting to put out albums and not staying in his ringtone slash singles lane, more like a Cardi B and many newer artists. 
Mims's albums showed he wasn't able to carry a full length by himself for the most part because lyrically he wasn't able to write verses that stood up to the artists peaking around that time like Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Jay-Z, Common, Lupe Fiasco, and others that kept your interest initially with their singles and fans giving more playback to listen to and understand their lyrics. His albums were also criticized for chasing pop rap hits, but not doing it well enough to have continued success. After This Is Why I'm Hot Cooled Off, there was just nothing about Mims as a rapper that made him that interesting by himself. But I ain't going on Mims, Mims, like, um, he, he can trust, he got, he, I ain't going front, he, he got, he got the star, he, he was, he was, like, fresh, like, what I mean by fresh, like, fresh clothes, you know, how to dress and all that, it's almost fly. Start number three, going tech. After so many disappointments in the rap and music industry, Mims decided he wanted to create his own situation and did so with his American King label. He attempted to continue his music career independently but soon realized how difficult that could be and instead chose to follow his other passion, which was technology and discontinued making music. He went heavily into the app world and had some success with his creator app that allows artists to connect directly to producers and get the opportunity to make quality songs without the hassle of having to pay your way on. He continues to chase his technology passion while music took a back seat. All in all, was Mims a one-hit wonder? Yes and no. Yes, because he was unable to follow up his number one song with another hit record of the same caliber. But no, because it's not easy going number one or platinum and following that up with the same success. At least he got the opportunity to have the rest of his music heard. It just wasn't as hot. Considering his early life circumstances, he still did well for himself, even though, for these reasons, his musical growth was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth Music, and I'm out. could have like went like went farther with his user career you know after that one um his song that he died this is why i'm hot so um yeah bro make sure y'all like come subscribe y'all know the vibes with you checking out you are